Whatever. Can you talk about, um, you get 25 plus years in public office. Yeah. The idea of someone like Donald Trump getting a place on the debate stage and you possibly getting left out. I don't think about that. It's a long road to Tipperary here. The nomination is a long and winding road. I'm not too worried about who's in, who's out, or just do what I can do. Governor, do you think the entire GOP and the eventual nominee are being negatively defined through all this Trump coverage? No, I don't. I think that at the end of the day, the nominee, is, if the nominee, whoever it is, he or she, will just stick to their message and not be driven because somebody's yelling at them, then I think we'll be in pretty good position, and they'll be the one to define the party, not what's going on in these intramural squabbles and all this pass. Governor, let's go back to let's go back to the debates for a second. We know that Fox and CNN are each going to have a debate with probably 10 or 11 candidates, but yet during the general election, the American public only hears from two candidates. Do you think that there should be more than two candidates in the general election debates? Oh, I don't know. I never thought about it. Who's going to be a third? Who's, who else is going to put up there? Uh, the last president, the, the last presidential election, the Libertarian and Green Party uh, were both on enough ballots to theoretically uh, win the nomination uh, or yeah, to win the election. We had the Green Party in, a, in one of the discussions I had in Ohio was fine, but I, I, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. We see how serious they are. You had a rather late announcement compared to the rest of the Republican contenders. I thought it was right on time. <laughs> Do you feel that you're still kind of riding that wave right now, and do you feel that that's been very beneficial, especially when we're talking about the debate and trying to buy for those last two spots? Um, you know, look, I've been doing this for a long time. You know, you guys have been covering me for a while. I just, just took me a while to make the decision. And um, look at the turnout here today. This was pretty cool. So uh, we must be doing something right. But I don't think it's just what we've done recently. It's what we've been doing for a time. And uh, it's a good, you know, I mean, it was amazing here today. As all these people were saying, the Democrats all want to vote for me. Maybe I'm in the wrong primary. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really interesting. But I I think we're fine. I don't think we come in too late. We came in at the right time. The challenge for me is, you know, I'm the governor of Ohio. I didn't go around the country trying to make a name for myself, so I don't have the big na national name ID. But it seems like every day we're doing a little bit better, and people are signing on, and it's, it's kind of cool to see what's happening. Uh, I'm not overwhelmed by it. I'm pleased by it, and I'm I'm pretty pretty cool and calm right now, and that's. You know, I'm having fun. I mean, can you tell? I mean, I'm having a good time. So hopefully that will last and I won't change uh, and get all wrapped around the axle. We'll see. Uh, I made some comments to the effect of, you know, when did the Republican Party become a party where it's bad to want to help other people? And you said that the party's message has become kind of narrow. Can you just flesh out what you mean by that? Look, I get, I get sometimes criticized by those in the party who call me a liberal. Because, you know, I'm I'm reaching out to people and want to give them the help in hand. And, you know, and then ultimately it's personal responsibility on their part. And, I mean, this is what people say, you know, you're not here to pass, you know, they say that. But um, I think it's something that's worth talking about and taking head on, but I'm not mad about it. It's just sometimes what people say. And part of my job is to lead the party in the direction that I think is, uh, is a good direction. And uh, so, you know, I think you've got to help people, but you got to grow jobs first. First you grow jobs, then you reach out and help people who need to get on their feet so they can become successful. One more. All right. Well, I'm going to cry if I don't win New Hampshire. No, I mean, it's really, really important because this is something I think people in New Hampshire, I know they know it, but you're the screener. You know, I was important to caucus, but here it's like anybody can vote, right? And so you're the screener for the country. And you feel people, you, you look at them, and then you make a decision about whether you're going to send them on. This is a really critical state. It was critical for McCain, it was critical for Reagan, it's critical. I mean, it's just a big, big deal here. So um, I appreciate the process. I'm glad uh, that I like coming here. We'll keep coming here. And as Arnold says, I'll be back. Thank you. Yeah, you, you gotta get planning. We gotta get him this.
I just got coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just got coffee. God bless you. God bless you.